let's take a look at this shot right here. Uh, this comes after um, uh, in the last lecture. Um, Danny couldn't go into the into the moon room uh, to room 237 because the Gemini NASA is still running the Gemini project and it's not over yet. That's why the the Gemini the, the twin girls the Gemini twin girls uh, are still alive. Uh, it's because uh, they represent the Gemini project that NASA did before uh, they started Apollo the Apollo project. Uh, the Apollo is to land on the moon. Uh, Gemini was to uh, the project before land, trying to land on the moon. All right. Um, uh, shot here is a mirror shot. Notice, uh, except for the lamp, it's pretty much a mirror on both sides. Uh, whether I point it out or not, uh, try to uh, notice that uh, some some mirror shots I forget. Here's another mirror shot. Uh, interesting uh, with about this uh, uh, mirror shot is you got the rockets on one side and nothing on the other. Almost like the rockets are an image of uh, nothingness. Uh, here's Wendy coming up to bother uh, Jack. Alright, Jack is getting very pissed off at Wendy. And like I said, uh, if if Wendy really was, if Wendy represented Christiana, and I, I know Christiana in no way bothered uh, Stanley Kubrick <laughs> the way uh, the way Wendy bothers Jack. Um, I just can't imagine that Kubrick would get anything done or put up with it. Uh, he, he was uh, he, he was a nice guy, but uh, uh, I can't imagine. Uh, uh, he seemed like a nice guy, but uh, I can't imagine him putting up with this or acting like Jack does in this uh, thing. Uh, one thing I want you to notice about this shot is these two these chairs and table uh, right here. Uh, Jack is talking to Wendy. Uh, next shot. Uh, and next shot, they disappear. So again, uh, here is the chairs. There's the chairs. They disappear. They disappear. Uh, but Wendy's talking about the weather, and Jack has bigger problems. And then there they are appearing again. So uh, what is Kubrick saying here is that uh, actually, Kubrick is proving my point that this is not two people. This is Jack talking to himself. The writer Jack is talking to the director Jack, you know, and then they're getting, uh, you know, he can't, he can't consolidate uh, the, he's having problems, you know, uh, writing whatever he's writing. Uh, also, I want you to notice that the, the, the typewriter has changed color. It's now much darker uh, it's a different typewriter uh, than before. So whatever he was writing before, uh, this bar possibly could be a representation that uh, before he was writing about 2001, and now he's he's starting to write about uh, the Apollo Project. Although he's not he's not allowed in the Apollo Project until Gemini is over, and he's written you know about the Apollo. Uh, he's written his uh, screenplay for the Apollo landing, uh, moon landing. Want to finish my work? That means you haven't finished your work. You're still working on it. All right. Here's Jack. This is a nice shot. Interesting thing about this shot is, um, if we look at this shot, sorry, I didn't point it out, but there is no fire going on here. There's no fire. Uh, so the fire, and the, the, nobody has ever. You haven't seen the fire on at any time uh, in the entire movie. And if we go forward. To this shot, the fire is on. The fire, the burning of the rockets. The rockets have been launched. Uh, I like the moose. <laughs> I don't know if there's an aspect of it that you have to be a moose, as stubborn as a moose. I don't know what I think is the saying. Um, the other thing is, is the sculpture is gone. The sculpture is gone. Was the sculpture gone before? Let me see. It was gone. Yep, sorry I didn't point it out. I told you I would forget. The sculpture is gone now. Interesting. So there is no sculpture. What, he, what, somebody carried away? What's going on, you know? Uh, why would they carry it away? And that thing was expensive. It was intricate. You try to touch that thing, it'd probably break in a second. You know? So, no, nobody touched the sculpture. It must have some sort of meaning, which, again, we'll have to wait for somebody 
somebody much smarter than me to figure out. Anyways, the rockets have been launched. The fire is going on under the thing. So apparently right now, uh, 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 Apollo 1 is going on, I guess. The fires represent the Apollo 1 fires. Uh, fire that happened in Apollo 1 that burned the three astronauts. Um, uh, Jack is watching Wendy and, uh, and Danny play outside in the snow, but he's got work to do, so he can't play in the snow. There he is, a little pissed. If you watch this scene, watch it very carefully. Um, you'll notice that Jack is looking outside. It looks like he's looking at, I assume, Wendy and Danny running in the snow. But at the very end of the scene, Jack tilts his eyes up. And I'm sure Kubrick, because I'm sure he did 50 takes of this, he took the one where Jack looked up. Uh, maybe he asked Jack to look up, whatever. But remember Ullman looking up. So this shot is about the moon. Just watch the scene. Uh, I'll try to get the. I tried to get the shot to see, but uh, yeah, uh, I didn't get the two shots between. It's hard to get the two shots between when he's looking this and, and looking that. I think this was the last shot I could get. But you have to watch the movie, and you'll see his eyes actually look up. Uh, no lights. No twelve. No twelve in the lights. There we go fire's going on, that sculpture is definitely gone. So somebody took that away. Uh, there's Jack. Riding on his typewriter. Wendy is trying to she's te testing the communication things. And this is where I say that, that Wendy is Stanley Kubrick. Because Jack never touches anything technical in the hotel. I mean, look at this. It's, uh, it's uh, Wendy who... Uh, demands the telephone system, you know, and, and watch the next the next shot uh, coming around. By the way, I don't know why I find this funny as a basketball player playing basketball. I don't know. Just uh, interesting that Cooper could put that poster up. And sometimes I, I give these clues so that other people go, oh yeah, that has to do with the moon landing. <laughs> I'm hoping somebody could convince me of it. Um, anyways. Uh, so the phones are not working. So what does Wendy do? She goes to the CB radio uh, here. Uh, notice that the two eagles are still there, even though Ullman's desk is pretty, uh, really clean. The, the eagle back here is there, and the eagle over here is there. One thing you see is a lot of it, people have pointed out that this looks like a stage with uh, curtains, you know, st curtains, st stage curtains here, so that the Apollo landings were uh, like a play that you see on Broadway. And here's the Apollo landing on the stage. Uh, th this then, this eagle would represent the communication between uh, uh, um, NASA and uh, the the fake moon landing. So that might have been uh, uh, Kubrick's intention by putting one eagle uh, close to the communication area, because we're going to see something later on where this eagle will disappear uh, later on in the movie. But anyways, Wendy's using the CB radio. She's talking to the Forest Service. Interesting. KDK 12 to uh, 1, 12, 2 plus 3 plus 7. You know, uh, 1 Apollo 1, maybe. Here's two 7 up call bottles. I wish there were 6 7 up bottles. Then I could say it's 6 times 7, but I, no such luck this time. Alright, I'll have to accept that. I don't know. There might be other things in this thing. I find it interesting the, the mirrored flag. Somebody buffed that wall quite a bit. I don't know how much buffing you have to do to actually get a reflection of the, the flag uh, on that thing. Uh, anyways, um, okay. And I can uh, anything else we can do for you? Bada -boom, bada -boom. Okay. So this is... This is the third time we've seen Danny uh, uh, talking. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, taking the. Um, yeah, this is the the third uh, tricycle scene in the movie. Uh, the first one he just went in a circle. The second one he went to room 237 and he couldn't. Um, he went to room 237. And he couldn't get in. 
Uh, this is the only scene where uh, Danny uh, disappears from us. All the other uh, tricycle scenes, we stayed with Danny from the beginning to the end. This one, he'll disappear if you watch. Right there, he disappears. And he disappears for a few seconds, you know, he's just like gone, you know. And then all of a sudden, he's in down a hallway. Uh, one thing I want you to notice about this is the fire extinguisher cubbyhole. Notice the fire extinguisher cubbyhole. Uh, Kubrick shot this on purpose uh, so future people could see this and understand what is about to happen next. So, fire extinguisher cubbyhole. Okay. Here goes Jack, uh, Danny around. I took another shot of it so you could see uh, maybe a little bit better in case it got cropped. Uh, fire extinguisher cubbyhole. Okay. And Danny turns the corner, and here's the Gemini twins. All right. Now, what's going to happen with the Gemini twins? The the pro the Apollo pro the the, the NASA project just before uh, Apollo. What's going to happen to them? Um, well, uh, the Gemini twins asked Danny, "Can he come and play with them forever and ever and ever?" And uh, then this happened. This shot comes up. All right. Now, remember when I asked you to look in the window and see no lights? This time there are three lights. Three distinguished lights. There was no way. I'm sorry I can't show you the other picture. But we'll see this in a, in a picture later on. The Kubrick re-shows it to you so that you, uh, you understand that these three lights are special. There's something special about these lights. Okay? Uh, one thing you will notice is uh, this uh, picture right here. It's askew. It's been knocked over. Uh, and people are like, well, if you're going to ax two little girls, of course, the guy might hit the picture and, and do it that. Yeah, he could. He probably would have knocked it off, though. You think with all the blood that's on it, you know, you would have thought that he would have knocked it off. But but he, Kubrick leaves the picture on to show you there's something wrong with this picture. That's what uh, that's what he's saying. And notice there's blood covering it. There's a, there's a, there's a there's a murder cover up of the picture. You know, of this picture, there's a murder uh, cover. -up. Okay, so the first thing we notice is the two girls are dead. What did the two girls represent? They represented, and I'm not saying this, other people have said this. I learned this from other people uh, on the internet doing shining uh, lectures. Um, the two girls are the Gemini Project, and the Gemini Project is over. That's part of the, that is being said in this scene. Um, the other part that's being said is, right after the Gemini Project, you have the Apollo Project start. And the first... Uh, uh, Apollo project was Apollo 1. And what happened in Apollo 1? I've mentioned this before. Three astronauts were uh, burned alive uh, to death in, um, in the capsule doing just a test that they weren't even being launched. They were, they, they, they'd sealed them up in the cabin. They'd burn them alive in uh, pure oxygen with a little you know freight electrical wire uh, conveniently uh, placed under their under their seats. Um, so, uh, what is Kubrick saying here? Uh, first of all, the astronauts, uh, although I think one of them was out of his seat, but they, the, the, one of them was uh, in his seat. Uh, the point is, they were in their seat when the fire started. So, notice there's a chair here. It's just like, what is this chair? First of all, why, is it, why isn't it knocked over or something? How did it magically land like this? Well, the chair is upside down. Okay, and um, what do you have here? You have the murder weapon. What is the murder weapon pointed at? Follow it, follow it. The murder weapon is pointed towards the chair. The, the murder weapon is not the axe. The murder weapon is the chair. The chairs that the Apollo astronauts were sitting in was where they were murdered. They were murdered by the capsule, by the people who were running the capsule. Now, I know that sounds crazy, and you're like, I don't know, you're reading a lot into this thing. But watch the other, watch this. Where is the darkest blood spots on the walls? If you look, where is the darkest? Eh, it's kind of light, kind of light, kind of light, kind of light. Oh, man, that's pretty dark. I don't think we can beat that except with this right here. What does that look like? Up and down. Well, it's the Greek letter lambda, or if you're in America, it looks like a A 
without the cross, but it looks like an A. An A? Hmm. Three astronauts dead on Apollo 1, there should be a 1. Well, that blood is kind of dark, but not that dark, not that dark, some blood down there. No, no. Oh, wait a second. That's pretty dark blood. And what does that look like? To me, it looks like a 1. You know, a pretty good facsimile. I mean, Kubrick wasn't going to write literally Apollo 1, just a lot of people uh, figure, but I think he sent the message fairly well by making this crazy blood splatter. I, I don't care how many times you chop people up, you're not going to get a blood splatter that goes up, then comes down at an angle, and then goes, you know, at another angle here. You know, no. Kubrick is pointing, is sending a confirmation signal. Something is up with this wall. First of all, it's about Apollo 1, where the astronauts died while sitting in there, burned alive, while sitting in their chairs as the murder weapon that is pointing to the chairs. This is Apollo 1, and look what we have here. Three lights. One is separated from the other two. Why? I didn't say this. Other people on the internet, you can find say this. So when when you watch other shining videos, which I'm sure you probably will watch, uh, and you say, "Hey, wait a second, Vince stole this." I I freely say that uh, that a lot of this stuff is uh, is uh, is uh, other people have said, and I freely say that I stole it from them, absolutely. But I steal it so that it's. I wanted to show you everything, including the stuff that I have not seen on the internet, and uh, I have included quite a bit of it. Uh, this I never saw on the internet. Nobody has ever on the internet pointed out the A1, Apollo 1 here. And, and, and it makes total sense because Kubrick loves confirmation. He loves to send you two signals to tell you something is up. And uh, the, anyways, the, the three lights represent the three astronauts di dying in uh, Apollo 1. They died rather brutally, as of course depicted by the, the dead girl bodies. Um, the reason he separated this one over the other ones, uh, a lot of people believe, is because this one represents Gus Grissom. He he was the bravest of them all, actually complaining and, and being very virulently uh, 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 anti the quality of the of the, 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 the the Apollo project was running. You know, he probably knew it was going to be faked anyways. You know, because the the this, this stuff is. By the way, if you watch the NASA footage of the astronauts, they have the actual conversation that they have with NASA while they're in the capsule, and one of the last things he says to the um, to the NASA people when they have communications uh, is, uh, he said, uh, I don't know, that there was something wrong with the communication, just like Wendy had the broken phones, you know, well, there was something wrong with the communications, and Gus Grissom says, uh, how are we going to fly to the moon, land on the moon, or whatever, go to the moon? when we can't even talk between buildings, you know. He actually says that, and I think that's when the communication was cut off between the, the astronauts and NASA, and that's when the fire started uh, conveniently for NASA. So um, this 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 star, rep uh, this star, this this light represents Gus Grissom, and these are the other two, Ed White and the other uh, astronaut here. So uh, this is Apollo 1 uh, murder scene here depicted. One more thing to point out that this is Apollo 1 is, you might say, well, if there was a fire, why didn't they open the door and pull them out and, and rescue them? It was only a test run. It wasn't like they abandoned them. There must have been people on the other side of the doorway. Well, first of all, the door, the, the design of the door was such that they couldn't uh, open the door. They had designed it in a way that they, it couldn't be opened. And, uh, and literally, they had to watch and hear the, the, the astronauts scream to death as they were being burned alive. And, and this is another symbolism that, that Kubrick has. I asked you what is the darkest spots on, the, uh, on all of this uh, uh, murder scene uh, here, and these two are the darkest. Now I ask what is the highest uh, blood. Well, this is pretty high, way up here, you know. But no, there's a higher spot. It's over here. And uh, this represents, it's kind of a strange uh, 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 pouring of blood. Uh, to pour like this. It's almost like this thing was in a blender or something. Um, but remember I asked you to remember the cubbyhole with a fire extinguisher. This is not a window like this. You can almost see right there the little shiny thing of the fire extinguisher. This is a fire extinguisher window. And what this blood represents on here is the failure to uh, to uh, rescue the uh, the uh, 
of the astronauts that were burning alive. Uh, they could not rescue them, and this shows the failure. The highest uh, blood mark was on the fact that they couldn't. It's one thing for it to be an accident and, and, and the fire start. It's another thing that you could not save the men. That's two mistakes. Two mistakes is a little bit too much uh, uh, to accept uh, from uh, this scenario. Um, one other thing that I find kind of interesting is um, on the barrister bottom the f uh, floor thing, there's blood here and there's blood here and there's blood all along here, you know, on the thing. And there's blood here and there's blood here and there's blood here. But suspiciously on the picture, there's no blood on the barrister. I, I think that was another thing for you to say, hey, wait a second. You know, Kubrick is trying to point you to th to thing for you to say, hey, there's no blood here. That's kind of weird. Let me follow the blood trail. Hey, this picture is askew. Hey, there's blood on the picture. Oh, duh. There's something wrong with this picture. Let me investigate this picture. So I got a feeling that's why Kubrick left no blood, because there's plenty of blood. There's a, there's a littler blood here. There's a shitload of blood right here, you know? So, so it's like, why is there no blood on the barrister here? It's for you to follow the, the breadcrumbs and find this. There's one other blood trail that I want to finish this uh, lecture with, and that is these blood trails right here. Look at this. And they continue over here at an angle. It's like, what blood? What, did this room get rotated or something? Since when does blood flow <laughs> at a, you know, 120 degree angle or whatever? I mean, all the other blood is pretty much straight, except this one arcs a little bit. You know what I mean? Everything else is pretty straight, except, of course, this thing that I mentioned before. But this is like crazy, crazy blood. And this is another thing that confirmation that Kubrick is saying, no, you're not crazy for thinking there's something weird about this chair. There is something weird about this chair. Notice it. That's what he's saying. The, you know, notice that there's something weird about this chain. So I'm sorry. I, I promised you this was going to be a gruesome scene. And uh, I hope it wasn't too gruesome for you. But if you watch the movie, uh, uh, it's in the movie.